Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday, so that means it is Ahsoka review slash reaction day. I love Wednesdays, at least until Ahsoka ends and then I go back to crappy hump days. Hump day! Now, like with most of my reviews, I'm not going to go step by step, do a full on breakdown. I'm just going to give you my unfiltered thoughts and reactions to this episode. I'm really enjoying what this series is giving us so far. It, it kind of feels old school where it is the good guys versus the bad guys, the Jedi versus the dark Jedi. And I'm really enjoying getting that old school feeling of what Ahsoka is bringing to this series. And that was something I was hoping was going to happen when you have someone like Dave Filoni creating this series, because a lot of these characters are coming over from Star Wars Rebels, a show that I absolutely adore, even though a lot of people didn't really see it because it's animated. And some people just kind of look down on animation and I don't know why because Rebels is one of the best things Star Wars has produced but yeah I love how Ahsoka feels like the extension of Rebels the continuation of Rebels and the one thing I really enjoyed about this episode as well as the series itself is all the lightsabers all the Star Wars ness that we're getting in here we had three lightsaber battles in this episode alone and to me that is awesome in a world where we just don't get as much lightsabers anymore ever since Disney took over Star Wars it is awesome that we're getting so much lightsaber action, you know, Jedi versus Dark Jedi. And by the way, guys, like Ahsoka is not an official Jedi, so I only use the term Jedi very loosely. And even though the Dark Jedi aren't really Sith, it kind of has that Jedi versus Sith feeling to it. It's the thing that I fell in love with Star Wars, and I'm so glad that Dave Filoni is able to bring that into this series. I constantly make the joke that we're getting more lightsabers in the first two episodes of this series than we did the entire sequel trilogy, and to me, I think that is sad. Star Wars is more than Jedi vs. Sith, but Jedi vs. Sith is the crux. It is the backbone of what makes Star Wars click. Yeah, we can get into all the Republic and political stuff and the Rebel Alliance and the Empire. Empire. But at the end of the day, a lot of us just want to see cool ass lightsaber battles. And I think Ahsoka has been delivering. We got three lightsaber battles, like I mentioned before in this episode, and I thought all three was awesome absolutely awesome and i want to throw out a massive shout out to ray stevens who's no longer with us unfortunately but his character and the way he plays the character balen i'm just absolutely loving it he feels like a, a character that is a massive threat but he's also cool calm he kind of reminds me like tarkin like you know this dude's a badass but he's not gonna like shout or yell he is just silent and very dangerous and one thing i really enjoyed about the balen character is he feels like he has a code like he doesn't want to kill Ahsoka he doesn't want to kill Sabine but he has to do what he needs to do in order to complete his mission we don't fully understand his mission why he's so ready to just go ahead and go along with the orders to just bring Thrawn back we don't know that clearly what his motivation is but I love his character and I love his Padawan Shin like a lot of people are going to roll their eyes about here's another female character shoved down our throat I really enjoy this character I like the way the character looks I like the way the character acts, and I like how the character is somewhat reckless, but also very deadly. Her lightsaber fight with Sabine I thought was absolutely awesome, and you can see where she wants to, she's like, she's obsessed with killing. Even Balin's like, look, I promise I wasn't going to kill her, like, calm down, but I really enjoy those two, and, and where we see Ahsoka and Sabine not always on the same page, it is clear that Shin knows that Balin is her master, and you are going to obey her your master. Another thing I really liked about this episode was the fact that Hera started getting a few of the troops together. We got to see the ship that goes. Jason Zandula is on the ship with his mother and just as they're getting ready to, to intervene, we get the hyperdrive activated and it just kind of like messes all things up. Ahsoka, we don't know if she's dead or landed in another dimension or whatnot, but that was crazy after her fight with Balin. And then the episode ends with the big cliffhanger of Anakin. And you know what? The CGI on his face to the agent didn't look the best but I'll tell you what I'd rather take that than what they did for Obi-Wan because it looked like there was a 40 year old man playing an Obi-Wan Kenobi Padawan from before the Clone Wars and it just looked absolutely awful in Obi-Wan they didn't try to de-age anything so I will take a little bit of you know Photoshop CGI that you kind of tell but I would take that 
over what they gave us in Obi Wan, where they didn't even try. It's like he here's here's a forty something year old Hayden Christensen, and he's playing Anakin from the Clone Wars. I'm like, sure, let's do it. But I'm really enjoying the series. I think this by far is the best episode that they gave us, and I am looking forward to see how they're going to finish this up. Because with a lot of Disney Plus shows, they they start off strong and then they kind of botch it toward the end. I have good I have good feeling about this. I have really good feeling about this, even though Jason said. Dula was like, I got a bad feeling, mom. Does that mean he's force sensitive? Does that mean he's force sensitive? Uh, I don't know. But I'm really enjoying the episode. What do you guys think? Be sure to leave your comments in the comment box below. And until next time, as always, I am Robert Storms, and that's my opinion.